please welcome our beloved preacher, builder, brother, friend, and hero, Brother Bo Sanchez. How many of you believe that you are a champion? Raise your hand. Everybody say, I'm a champion. I want you to greet somebody beside you. Just tell that person, you're a champion. Do you know why you're a champion? Ask me why. Because this past week, or maybe this past month, you've been going through some challenges. You've been coming, going through some trials. You, you've, coming, you've been coming from some struggles and you're still standing here, still loving God, still holding on to faith, still saying, I will overcome. You are a champion. Amen? Amen. I believe that God made you a champion. The Bible says that He made you in His image and likeness. Yes? He made you in His image and likeness. Therefore, flowing through your veins is the blood of a champion. In every cell of your body, in every fiber of your being, you have the DNA of a champion. You will overcome. Every trial that you have right now, every crisis that you're going through, every struggle that you're going through, all of that is temporary. Everybody say that, temporary. I want you to encourage somebody beside you. Tell that person, your trial is temporary. The Bible also says in Romans 8.37 that we are more than conquerors. Say that with me, more than conquerors. You know, when I read that verse, I, I think of my life, I think of my experiences, I tell myself, my gosh, it's true. We can overcome. You know, when, when you fall from this position and then you fall, you know, you know what happens because you are more than a conqueror? Ask me what? You're here, you fall, but because you're more than a conqueror, when you fall, you bounce. And when you bounce, you don't go to where you came from. You go higher than where you have fallen. I've seen that happen in my life so many times. God does not only forgive you of your sin, but when you fail, He picks you up and then He lifts you all the way higher and higher. And you almost want to say, thank you, Lord, I failed. Because now I'm in a higher ground. Because you learn from what you have experienced. Do I hear an amen? amen. One more time. Tell somebody beside you, you are a champion. Tell that person beside you, you are a conqueror. Hallelujah. How many of you have come for the first time? Can I see a raise of hands? Thank you so much for being here. Welcome. 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 This is your family now. And if you believe that God will speak and bless you and minister to you today in the deepest part of your being, let's pray together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's Word so I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I'm God's powerful champion, and because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. We're going to talk about Rahab today. Say Rahab. Rahab. Ask me, what, what, what is her profession? Ask me what? She's not a secretary. She's not a teacher. She's not an accountant. She's not a nurse. She's not a manager. She's not a sales lady. She's a prostitute. Rahab. That's what we're going to talk about. Shocking? Here's something more shocking. God chose her to be a hero. God chose her to be a champion. 
a prostitute. As I speak to you now, there's a children's ministry going on simultaneously in the three other rooms of PICC. Those of you who have kids, you know that you send your kids there. How many of you already noticed that whatever I speak about here in this big hall is also spoken and taught in the kids' ministry? We have the same topic. I talk about Daniel, they talk about Daniel. I, I talk about Nehemiah, they talk about Nehemiah. Today, I'm going to talk about a prostitute and the kids' ministry will talk about a prostitute. You can just imagine how hard it is now for the kids' ministry teachers to explain when some little boy will raise his hand and say, Teacher, what is a prostitute? Oh! <laughs> Let's sing! Let's sing! <laughs> I don't know what they will do there, but you see, it's so difficult. That's what I'm trying to say. It's difficult to explain to you how God would choose a prostitute to be a hero. We're going to read. Are you ready? Israel, Israelites, they sent two spies to Jericho. And God chose this one woman, a prostitute, to welcome those two spies, to hide them when, when the king wanted to kill them. Let's read chapter 2. When Joshua sent two spies from the camp at Acacia in Green Hills, <laughs> with orders to go and secretly explore the land of Canaan, especially the city of Jericho. When they came to the city, they went up to spend the night in the house of a prostitute named Rahab. The king of Jericho heard that some Israelites had come to that night to spy out the country, so he sent word to Rahab, the men in your house have come to bring out this, spy out the, the whole country, bring them out. And it says there, uh, Now Rahab had taken the two spies up on the roof and hidden them under some stalks by a flax that she had put there. And as you read through this story, you find that Rahab was used by God and the spies were safe and Israelites conquered Jericho and Rahab was saved because of what she did. Imagine if Rahab said to God, God, why are you choosing me? I'm, don't you know what I do? I'm, I'm a bad woman. I've done bad stuff. God, not me. I'm not worthy. God, please choose my neighbor. I think, I think she's a praying type. I'm, I'm a prostitute. She, she, I, I see her read her Bible every day. Come on, choose her. Lord, please choose her. She, she doesn't wear miniskirts. She, she doesn't have a tattoo in her arm. I do. She hasn't slept with 856 men. I have. Don't choose me. Are you listening to what I'm saying? There could not have been a wronger woman than Rahab. Yet why does God choose Rahab's? Why? to tell you and to tell me, I can choose anyone. Just say yes, and I will use you. Big message for today. God's message for you today. God will use anyone who says yes. And you don't have to be pretty, and you don't have to be tall, and you don't have to be big, and you don't have to be educated, and you don't have to be well-connected, and you don't even have to have it all together. You could be like Rahab, and God will still choose you if you say yes. Amen? One last passage I'm going to read. It's from the New Testament. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Love this passage. It says here, verse 26, Now remember... What you were, my friends, when God called you. From the human point of view, few of you were wise or powerful or of high social standing. God purposely chose what the world considers nonsense in order to shame the wise. And He chose what the world considers weak in order to shame the powerful. He chose what the world looks down on and despises and thinks is nothing in order to destroy what the world thinks is important. This means, this means that no one can boast 
in God's presence. Rahab could not boast. Rahab could not say, oh, you know why God chose me? Because I'm good. Could Rahab do that? And that's our position as well. Are you ready to say yes to God? How many of you have done bad things in your life? Raise your hand. You know what that means? Ask me what? You're qualified. You're qualified to be chosen. You're qualified to be used by God. You're qualified to be a hero. If this is posture is okay for you, lift up your hands and say this after me. Father, I thank you that you're choosing me and that you're using me. And I'm not worthy, but thank you. Thank you so much. I say yes. Use me to serve you, to serve your people. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Give the Lord a big hand and love Him and worship Him and glorify His name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hug somebody beside you, greet somebody beside you, shake the hand of somebody beside you, tell that person God will use you. Amen. Let's all be seated, everybody. Touch somebody beside you and say God will speak to you today. And the video and the story that will be shown to you, I believe God will use to speak to you. Watch, listen, and be blessed. Mukhang malalim yata ang iisip mo. Ah, wala naman. Naisip ko lang mapangyari naging bahagi ng aking buhay. Matagal na tayo magkasama rito sa bundok. Pero magpa hanggang ngayon, hindi ko pa alam ang buong pagkatao. Ang totoo bakal, baka matapos mo malaman dahilan ng pamamalagi ko dito sa bundok, ay hindi ka maniwala. Hindi mabubura sa aking isipan ang lahat-lahat na nangyari sa aking pamilya. Myra Manibog, or rather, I'm better known as Myra Manibog. My real name is Geraldine Zervulacos. Right now, I work as a team manager for a call center here in Pampanga. I've been serving the Lord since 1993, um, up until now. I used to be in show business. I used to do sexy films um, during the 80s. That's how I, I earned the name Myra. I was one of the soft drinks beauties. Um, I used to be the Ancola among the soft drinks beauties. Um, my name was supposed to be Mirinda Manibog, but then they changed it to Myra Manibog. I was in show business uh, for seven to eight years until I got married and I decided and decided to have my own family. Lumaki ako sa broken home. I grew up na walang father. Apat kaming magkakapatid, iba-iba kami ng father. And lahat kami, hindi namin nakasama yung father namin. At the age of 10, nag-start ako mag-work as a lingerie model. By 13, pumasok ako sa show business, started doing sexy films or bold films. Sumikat naman, di ba? And nung sumikat, marami siyempre yung trabaho, maraming kahit pa paano nabibili lahat ng gusto. Napagod ako, gusto kong magpamilya, sabi ko. So doon, nag-start ako ng family at the age of 18. I got married and I had my first kid. Tapos nag-abroad kami mag-asawa. We stayed in Japan for a long time. Tumaba ako when I gave birth. Doon nag-start yung insecurities. Nalulong sa drugs. Five to six years, I was under the influence. Talagang 
Kumbaga parang dumating ako sa point na hindi na ako makakilos pagka wala ako, hindi ako nakatake ng drugs. And doon nag-start masira yung buhay ko, naghahalucinate na ako, I hear voices in my head, I see things. Uh, pag dumarap ako sa salamin, may nakikita akong mga iba't ibang visions. I reach a point na gusto ko nang magpakamatay. Ilang beses ako nag-attempt na mag-suicide kasi hindi na ako happy sa buhay ko. Nasira yung marriage ko. Uh, lagi kami nag-aaway mag-asawa. Nagkakasakitan na kami. Nung bababae yung asawa ko, inuwian na ako ng babae sa bahay. Dahil frustration ko magkaroon ng buong pamilya since lumaki nga ako na walang tatay. So, malaking failure para sa akin bilang tao, bilang babae na hindi, na hindi mabubuo yung pamilya ko na masisira yung marriage. Ko. So, yun yung time na uh, nandun ako sa darkest point of my life na ayoko na talaga, I gave up, sabi ko. Suko na ako sa buhay ko, ganun. I believe na mahal ako talaga ng Diyos eh, kasi siya yung gumawa ng way para makapagbago ako ng buhay. Naalala ko na nasa Japan ako, bago pa lang na yung Oasis of Love, meron kaming binibiling uh, magazine na galing dito sa Pilipinas. Tapos, na-feature si Boyet de Leon. Siya nga yung isa sa mga servants ng Oasis of Love. And since nasa showbiz ako, sabi ko, Nung time na yun, 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 yun yung time na talagang parang uh, gumigive up na ako sa buhay ko. Dahil hindi ko na nga alam yung nangyayari sa buhay ko, siguro dahil lumaki ako sa Catholic school, yung faith and yung pagdadasal, natural na sa, sa lifestyle ko yun. So kahit na nung sira na yung ulo ko dahil sa drugs, meron akong natanggap na gift, yung prayer book. Hindi ko naman na naintindihan yung laman ng prayer book. Dahil nga, hindi na nga ako matinong isip. Pero, yung, yung will ko to, to cling to God, nandun, and I read the prayer book cover to cover every day. Not knowing na yung Holy Spirit, yun na yung kumikilos. And naririnig pa rin ni Lord yung prayers ko, kahit na nga hindi na siya, hindi, na, hindi ko na naiintindihan na I'm praying. And then one day, uh, nung nakita ko yung magazine, sabi ko, gusto kong mag-sumali dito. Tapos nung dumating ako sa point na parang nakikita ko na yung 